Everybody knows last fall, there were power outages that affected half a million. A Sorry, <clears throat> I might take a little bit of water first. So there were power outages that affected half a million people, actually half a million homes. And it just <clears throat> underscored how much we depend on the grid, blah, blah, blah. But what was really shocking was that despite our prodigious investment in solar energy and the fact that it was a beautiful sunny day, if you had a solar system on your rooftop, your food still spoiled. And that happened to so many people. It was a shock to so many people. And the reason for that is that if you have the kind of system that can keep your refrigerator running uh, using your solar panels, you would have paid twice as much as your neighbor who just has a normal solar array. And almost nobody can afford twice as much for a solar system. That's the problem that MaxOut is solving. With our polyverter, with its patented technology, we will bring the cost of a, a, uh, an array like this with backup into the mainstream. And that's a great thing because it's not just a emergency preparedness kit that you pull out twice a year. It's a tool that the homeowner and the grid operator use every single day to reduce cost, to improve the resiliency of the grid, and to improve the efficiency of the system. So this is introducing the MaxOut Polyverter. It's the world's first all-in-one. Let's see here, is there a laser? Laser. The world's first all-in-one, there we go. A true all-in-one hybrid inverter. It has, it features full per panel power optimization, which means that your solar array gets the maximum power out of it over its entire lifetime. It features backup, surge, and load shifting capabilities, so it has all of the battery backup requirements. It's easy to install, unlike conventional battery systems. It's a third the cost of the conventional systems, and it achieves those cost savings through patented architectures, not through uh, pinching pennies. One of, the, one of the inventions is actually a, what's called a massively interleaved converter. Uh, we proved that out in the, as part of the CalSeed program uh, last year. Uh, I will not go into this, but I will answer questions about it. Uh, bottom line is it's less cost and it's radically longer life. We, we set out to attack the problem of reliability for inverters and we solved it technologically. The other one, the other uh, one I'd like to talk about, the other invention, and I should say that nine patents have issued, five are pending, uh, is what we call the three-in-one balancer stage. This is a, a stage that's time-shared that performs full pa per panel optimization individually, charge control for the batteries, and the boost stage for the inverter using the same electronics is simply time-shared. And this leads to less cost, fewer components, and increased efficiency over a system where you just have a sequence of power stages. One of the biggest costs in a solar array is the installation, and another one of the biggest costs is the maintenance. So we attack that problem too. And one of the biggest problems with solar arrays is electronics on the roof. The roof is extremely hot in the summer. It's exposed to the environment. It's a place I like to say electronics go to die. So we don't put electronics there. We keep it in a box that's in a place that's easily and safely maintained, easily and, easily and safely installed. We package the components of the uh, inverter that wear out, namely the batteries and the electrolytic cap capacitors in modules that can easily be changed out even by a homeowner. And if you do have to replace, or if there's a failure of the power electronics, there's a simple um, unsnap the lightweight uh, stage and snap in a new one and you're, uh, you're back uh, on the grid. <clears throat> so how do we compare with the competition? The main competitors that have full backup capability are SMA and Solar Edge, and with them you have to buy an inverter. Actually, with SMA you have to buy two inverters, you have to buy an expensive battery, and you have 24 pieces of electronics you have to install on the roof, and you pay more than $10,000. The max out polyverter at two times COGS, and I'll explain why I picked two times COGS in a minute is uh, less than $2,000. Optimizer is included, the battery inverter is included. Um, a 2.5 kilowatt hour battery is included. If you upgrade it to the same size as the competing systems, that's a $1,600 premium. It's one box to install, nothing on the roof. 
it's a third the price. And if you go with our preferred system, which has a 2.5 kilowatt bat uh, hour battery, which we calculate to be a better, a better deal for the consumer, then it's a fifth the cost of these systems. So the aim of this is to move storage into the mainstream so everybody gets it. It's a no brainer, you just automatically get it when you put in your solar array. Now this is a breakthrough product. It's a giant leap and it's maybe never a good idea to take a giant leap. So what we're proposing here is that you take two steps. And the first step is that we provide the front end, the three-in-one balancer, which provides the battery, uh, the backup battery and the um, per panel optimization as a standalone product with a partnership with an inverter company with a commercially available inverter such as this one. Um, the bottom line here is still a factor of two better than what's ex what is out there right now, and it's a s an easy stepping stone. So the things that are in green here are the things that we are fundraising right now to bring to market so that we have a partnership by this time next year with an inverter company. So the market we're going after is the U.S. residential market, half a billion dollars growing at 10% a year. Um, the market share uh, in 2018 looked like this. Solar Edge had the lion's share, SMA, Enphase, and a bunch of other uh, companies vying for the U.S. market. Now, what's interesting is if you go back any year before that, you see that these pieces of pie move all over the place, and they correspond to uh, the companies releasing inverters with new technologies. Um, this uh, had been a year or so after SolarEdge in introduced its interesting um, PV wave uh, inverter. It's a really nice inverter. Um, it has some of the same kind of attributes that the polyverter has, but it doesn't have it doesn't solve the reliability problem. But it is a highly differentiated inverter. Anyway, all of the inverter companies know that they need to roll out technologically differentiated inverters to gain market share, and so they are looking for companies like. Max out renewables to partner with to get this partner or purchase to get these technologies. So that's what we're going for. So what we've done so far is we filed patents on the balancer and the polyverter and the hybrid inverter. Um, nine of them have issued in the U.S. and China. Five more are pending, and more are on the way. We took the balancer through field testing, the polyverter through lab testing as part of the CalSeed program. What we have right now. Uh, is uh, circled funding is 450k over 18 months to bring the polyverter through field testing. But what we have an open round for, or the round that is just opening now, is to expedite the, valid, the balancer stage through certifications, and these are the relevant ones, so that by this time next year we can have a partnership with an inverter company and bring that intermediate step, that stepping stone product to market. If we do that, then we have some financial projections, and there's a financial model based on a white label uh, scenario. There are a lot of different partnership scenarios, so this is just one of them. But the bottom line is we can be a hardware company that is actually profitable in three years, which is really just kind of mind-blowing if you think about it. Or actually, if you're close enough to it, or as close, as, close to it as I am, it's really mind-blowing. So again, the, the polyverter has backup surge load shifting capability. It's unprecedentedly easy to install for a, a system with full backup. It's a premium solution. It, it costs a third as much, but it's a premium solution. It costs less because of architectural um, advances that are patented, and it's a market changer. I'm Eric Cummings. I founded MaxOut. Actually, I spun MaxOut out of Cool Earth Solar, which was a company I founded in 2005, actually along with John Bonanno, who is in the audience here, um, to try to make solar farming affordable. Uh, cool Earth, by the way, is doing well. It was SunPower's uh, commercial installer of the year in 2018. SunPower is one of the premier uh, solar installer companies in the world. So that is a possible route for us to uh, get early market adoption and expand our sales uh, uh, quickly. Kirsten Pace is our COO. Oh, sorry. Kirsten Pace is our COO. She has a lot of experience managing uh, research and development teams and projects. We have advisors uh, in manufacturing, including Kevin Doherty, who is a plant manager at Flex, which is one of the world's greatest uh, contract manufacturers. Rob Lampkins, the CEO of Cooler Solar, I mentioned. Kurt Kuhlman is a battery expert. 
Kay Smedley is one of the world experts in power electronics. So we have a great team and we're ready to take off. And with your help, we will bring uh, storage into the mainstream. Thank you. <clears throat> Great presentation. So from our panel, um, questions, comments? Uh, I have one. Yeah. Uh, is, the, is the primary value proposition for residential homeowner just basically backing up critical uh, refrigerators, you know, other other aspects during these, is that the primary no. value? No, actually that's the thing we're trying to avoid. That like That is a very, very strong pain when you feel it, but you don't feel it that often. And if, if things straighten mm -hmm. out, you know, who knows, you may feel it like 12 seconds a year or something. So it's not a pain that you, you, you wouldn't buy this just for that. The interesting thing with the battery storage is that the, t the load shaping and the time of use shifting is really where the money's at. Every single day that gets more, that, that allows you to uh, save money on your power bill. Because right now the way the uh, utilities have uh, structured the power billing, in the middle of the day when your, produce, your solar arrays are producing all of their power, you're getting basically nothing for that power. But if they were producing it around five o'clock to nine o'clock p.m., you would get you would get three times as much for the for the power. So with this, you can charge the batteries during the peak of the day when you're producing more power than you're using, and then provide that back to the grid and get credit, actually, you know, on your power on your power bill for that uh, time shifting. So thanks for that question. Yes. <laughs> Here. You had it before. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you say you need 750k to get to your partnership now. Do you have some relationship with these uh, people, or how do you? How do you just... Yeah, uh, we we have talked with uh, a number of the. Uh, inverter companies. Actually, I mean, the thing is that if I take off my shoes, I can actually show you how many, you know, of these inverter companies that would be pot potential targets that there are. And they all go to Solar Power 2000, um, or sorry, solar. they're all going to Solar Power 2020 next year. So our aim is actually to start to talk, uh, to do negotiations at that time. That's in the fall next year. So we're trying to get our certifications done before that time. So you haven't done any we, we have done the initial things, is this interesting, is this something, and, and the indications are yes, uh, but I think that uh, when, when we have something that we can show them with, a, you know, with the certifications, because that's kind of a, that's a proof point that's required for a partnership. The reason why I'm bringing up how yeah. companies in similar situations, I know it's always important to get the certification, but it's still good to like talk to them, start Absolutely. the conversation. Yeah. It can really get, you don't have to wait there. And, you yeah. know, you may get the 750K and lose it all. I mean, right. it happen. Right. So it's important to build that relationship with them right away yeah. and see how you can work together. Yeah, great. That's a great point. And th that is our aim. We are trying to, uh, to do that, especially with one or two of the companies that really look like there's a perfect match. So, yeah, that's, that is our aim. So I yeah, highly recommend that. It's other, I've seen it go the other way. Yeah, you wait too so long and, is, yeah, you don't yeah. rely on this money. Like, yeah. start building relationships. Yeah, don't. Uh, don't invite your date to the prom at the prom. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> of the prom, Mariah, uh, did you have a question? Um, yeah, I'll piece that together later. <laughs> um, in relation to uh, the surge pricing, um, optimizing for the surge pricing, is that something that's been standalone with the grid, like our smart meters are doing now, or is there interfacing with um, smart homes? Can you tell us a little bit? more about the software hardware relationship. Yeah, this, this is something that's um, <clears throat> it's pretty exciting, really. And there are some things I, I how much to say? What I, what I will say is what's, what's amazing is how much smart home technology there is right now that can, you can immediately take on, uh, use piece, pieces in your system, like the stuff that Alexa controls right now. Use those pieces in your system and really control the, the load profile of a home to manage the manage the costs, you know, the cost of electricity of a home, um, in a way that you couldn't do. You'd have to internalize all those development costs just five years ago. But now it's just it's just something you can buy. So what what we what we do is we take the existing signals from the from the internet or over a cell phone interface 
from the utility operators to say what the pricing is and what the, you know, I mean, it's basically the Rule 21, the California Rule 21 type signaling. If you're familiar with that, in, you know, for inverters, there's a, new, there's a new rule that you have to, your inverter needs to work well with the utility. And the utility has to be able to tell it what to do. It has to be able to respond and go back and forth. So that information is out there. What's nice is we don't have to do anything like, like, you know, there's no pioneering work now. We just react to the signals that are already there. So what we're doing is, you know, with our system, we are reacting to the existing signals just, you know, in accordance with the Rule 21 spec. And, uh, and we, we micromanage some elements of the house grid to uh, give further uh, savings for our customers. I'll just leave it there, perhaps, if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, great presentation. Uh, you, it was really, really well done. Um, can you talk about state and federal incentives that you would qualify for? <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> I, I wish I could. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of buried in math most days, and I, I'm afraid that I'm not. Kirsten, can you answer that question? <laughs> we can get back to you on that. That's a very I mean, it might be a good benefit just to have in there that, in addition to this, you can also get, yeah. I don't know. I, I will say that there are incentives toward installing um, batteries for the purpose you know, of, time sh of time shifting. You have to demonstrate that you're doing a certain number of kilowatt hours per year, and we will definitely qualify for that. But that's very regional, and it depends on which utility you're under and so on. And, and I think oh, our, yeah. our focus is we're trying to make this affordable without any incentives. And, you know, are just it's crazy. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, there was in the back. There was a question. Yeah. I have a million questions. I'll save <laughs> most of them for later. Um, one is about battery chemistry. What batteries you're working with, as well as compatibility for expanding with other battery systems. So, what chemistry and what BMS communication? Um, and a second one is how you're complying with the new uh, rapid shutdown requirements for both solar and battery <coughs> systems. Okay. So. So the first one is we plan to use tier two lithium ion batteries. We're not married to that. That's our plan. And that really looks like it pencils out the best. I th um, there's also lithium iron phosphate. I mean, there are the, the nice thing is the way that we've got it architected, you can actually mix battery types on the same system, old, new battery types. So we have modules that are, um, that are 100 kilowatt hour uh, kind of modules. They're, they're about the size of a large flashlight, kind of like old style flashlight that you, you plug into the, the system. And um, the different battery chemistries are just firmware in the system. The battery management system is our own spin and it's proprietary. It has some really clever stuff to it, uh, patent pending. The uh, answer, what was the third one? Rapid shutdown. Rapid shutdown, okay, that's a good question. Yeah, the um, balancer actually has uh, connections to each solar panel and will and provides a rapid shutdown functionality. So there's you know so all of that is handled by the uh, three-in-one balancer front end. Mike, you had a question and we'll come back to you. Yeah, I was going to ask the, the battery question because that historically has been I mean, we've spent six years talking. It, a different chemistry. So I was wondering what, yeah. if you, if you yeah. have a good supply chain of that and what chemistry you're going You with. know, the best way to have a good battery supply chain is not to have high expectations. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's seriously it. Like, if you're doing vehicular batteries, you want to be able to have really fast discharge, really fast charge. And so, like, the LG batteries, those are just fantastic, phenomenal. Like, 10... C discharge, 20C, you could, you know, the, the kinds of things that allow a Tesla to take off vertically, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. For, for terrestrial use, why bother? You know, so we're really looking at something that will give a, a enough lifetime that it, it much more than pays for itself. And, and that appears to be even the tier two batteries that have like a, a cap of about a 1C discharge. Are you familiar with that? That's basically the whole capacity of the battery down in one hour is the is the maximum sustained rate. And same thing with charging, you know. So that's th those batteries are actually kind of a dime a dozen. I mean, I would like to say they were a dime a dozen. They're more like eight dollars at 
for 10. So they're $10 a dozen. Um, <clears throat> but they're, uh, you know, where the LG batteries are more like, you know, $3 each or, or you know, $2 each. So, uh, so we, what we found is that you can find vendors that provide you batteries that, that meet your specs and don't break the bank. But this is still very early and we need to do, you know, the full um, certification testing, including the UL 1973 and that kind of thing. And we may have some ugly, uh, ugly surprises at that point. At that point, what it means is our batteries cost more than we thought they would, but not that much more. Like we don't have a big enough battery where that's enough to break the bank. So that's, that's kind of where we're, you know, how we're addressing that. Yes. Jack, did you have a question? Oh, no, he's answered my questions. Thanks. Okay, Brian or Chris, <coughs> any last one? All right. Yeah. So, um, speaking of, of incentives, is this primarily or solely for residential use? Is there you know, use cases for you know, uh, commercial building or you know, clean, yeah. uh, farming? Yeah, that is actually the the origin of it was the solar farming, you know, large scale utility solar. So that's where I would love to be. Um, for residential, you typically have single phase, um, which means that the structure of your inverter is a little bit different than it would be for a three phase inverter. So our first mm -hmm. products will be targeted for, for households, for residences. Um, but, there's, but the technologies um, can be used, actually they're, they're even better economics if you go to three, a three phase system. So that's really where we wanna go but we think it's easier actually to penetrate the market at the residential side. How much of a leap would it be in going back to incentives? I know that, uh, I'm not sure if it's the Energy Commission, but I noticed that <coughs> incentives um, for retrofitting where the government is kind of taking, bearing the cost and reaping the benefits of the saving um, and making it very easy for commercial building owners to qualify. So how much of a leap is it from where you are now to do that. It would be, <laughs> it would be the leap of another 750k convertible note round. Very likely. I mean, that's the, that's kind of what it is because we have the technology. Is it, it would be accelerating a a different architecture system. A sl I mean, it's not radically different. It, it's a different architecture, um, and and it would be certification of all of the components of that. And certi certifying an inverter is about a 750K process. How long does that take? Uh, we have, we've given ourselves nine months for the first one. I would think the second one we send through is more like three to five months. The first time through, you, you need more hand-holding, you get things wrong. Uh, but the second time around, it should be a lot smoother. And, and by that time, we'll have the batteries and the other uh, components already um, completely certified, so there's less to do. So that's 1.5 over a year, you can get both? Yeah. Probably 1.5 over a year and a half. Okay. Because I, I think you'd use a lot of the same people, and you, would, you, you wouldn't want to have parallel, pe parallel teams trying to cut the time in half. It'd be better to do sequentially so that the, the, the people learn the, um, you know, I mean, I, that's how I would try to do it. I think if you wanted to try to really accelerate it, you're talking about a multiplier more like, you know, instead of another 750K, you'd be talking about like $2 million or something like that total to build the team rapidly to be able to handle two simultaneous developments. Last question, Mike. Real quick, so is the commercial one still set in with your patent portfolio or would that be other it, it does, yeah, yeah. The Actually, it's closer to the, to our base patent than than uh, which which has issued um, the the more recent ones which have not yet issued are more uh, for the single phase. Yeah. All right. Thank you very okay. much. Great